Mm -hmm. Well, I, I fell in love with Duke Ellington in 12th grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's funny. I'll tell you a funny thing. I always think about time. Sure. By the way, I just turned 60. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, you You're go. welcome. October Libra. Birthday. Libra. Yep. Here, I'm going to have you do something real quick. Do your scarf. Just make sure it's not on the microphone. It'll, it'll uh, right. make too much of Okay. Here we go. Right. Before you before right. we go on. Okay. So um, I think about time a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, about, it was my, oh, here it was. It was the morning of my 60th birthday. And I said, what do I want to listen to? I just looked at my records and, and the spine of this one, you know, when it's a box record and the spine's bigger, mm -hmm. and it just said big letters, Duke Ellington, Fargo 1940. You know about this record? No. Oh, man, they found this record. It's all like when you grew up. See, when I was like really into record collecting, maybe, and, and learning about stuff, 18, 19, 20, they had found this recording of Duke Ellington playing a dance in Fargo, North, North Dakota. Okay. Ray Nance had just joined the band. Cootie had just left to join Benny Goodman. It's Rex. Ray Nance is maybe playing the first time they say it was. Who knows what it really was. Ben Webster, Johnny Hodges, Jimmy Blanton, you know, Barney Begard, you know, Lawrence Brown just playing so incredibly. Um, and uh, I listened to it. I just put it on. So that's the first thing I'm going to listen to on sure. my 60th birthday. Uh -huh. I hadn't heard it in a long time. It just sounds so great. I mean, I hadn't heard it in so long. It sounds so different to me than when I first heard it. Sure. Because it was like the first time they had found like an air check of this band that it's like height mm -hmm. and playing sure. a dance. Um, I said, wow, what made me so attracted to that music 40 years ago? Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. And I said to myself, well, what music is 40 years ago from right now? Defunct. Like the difference between now and defunct is the difference between defunct when I got to New York and Duke Ellington. Sure. Like, you know, it was, it was New York time. It was like that world, that kind of downtown wild world. And I was, for whatever reason, that Duke Ellington just spoke to me so hard, much. But even when I was younger, but in high school, but just kept going stronger and stronger. And I'd say there were probably 20 years where I listened to Duke Ellington every day. It was like religion. It was, yeah. like, I, it was like I had to. It was like I have a cup of coffee. Like, well, you like, like, what, you don't listen to Duke Ellington every day? <laughs> like, how do you know anything then? Sure. How do you know well, at least about music? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? I yeah. mean, you might know something about, like, I don't know, bowling. Sure. Anyway. That was an amazing band. Did, oh, you, uh, yeah. did you ever get to see them? Yeah. Oh, are you setting me up, or do you know the Duke Ellington story? No. Oh, my God. This is a good story. <laughs> I, okay, right here. See, do, 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 do. Okay, know who taught me to do that? Who's that? Duke Ellington. When okay. I was in third grade, Duke Ellington, and there's, there's stuff, you can, might you want to find a little link of, I'll send it to you, of when Duke Ellington went to Berkeley mm -hmm. schools. We had the first integrated school system. And I think it was even the first year of integration. The second year he came and visited, because Dr. Herb Wong was a famous educator, DJ, record producer, he had started this jazz program that Peter Applebaum and the original kind of kids that came out of it were Peter Applebaum and Rodney Franklin. And in a kind of satellite way, David Murray, just because he was the same age, but Herb Wong was bringing, started a jazz program, started in fourth grade, hired Phil Hardiman and, and Dick Whittington to start teaching fourth like this fourth graders who had just learned their instruments how to play jazz. So you had a jazz, writing charts for kids who were in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like six clarinets, seven trumpets, two trombones, Angela playing the, the, the left hand. Okay, we didn't have a bass player. She played the organ, that little organ, that bass. She went do, 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 do. Angela Berry. She played the bass line on the left hand, the organ. And we had a band. And swing, we always had, like, of course, amazing drummers. And... Um, so, Duke Ellington came. Now, this is before I was even in fourth grade. I wasn't even playing music, but he came. Dr. Herb Wong had brought him to the Berkeley schools. And he visited some schools, and they did a big concert. I assume it was at the Berkeley Community Theater, and my mom brought me in third grade. My mom was really amazing, and she was like, of course, I'm taking a seat. And he taught all the kids to, you know, to, 
uh, you know, put down your left earlobe on one, snap on two. It's probably a little slower a bit to teach us to do it. And they say, that's how you cool. That's how you be cool. Like, <laughs> and so I learned that in third grade from Duke Ellington. And he brought kids on to do the funky chicken. He had like a little rock tune he would do that, that he used to play. And he brought some of those kids from the schools. And there was a slideshow, as I remember before, and there was a picture of him with our principal. And I thought, man, Duke Ellington's got to be important, man, because he's, he's got a slideshow. Things right up there with the, the principal, man. It's like, this guy's got to be big time. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, man, it's so amazing that he would go, I mean, given his role in American music, to show <laughs> up and be like, I'm going to hit these kids to this music and, like, bring this to the schools. And, yeah, you know, he was just, and that music, it's just like, for me, I don't know. For me, it's just the music. I just, you know, I was just talking to my friend, Matt Merowitz, and we're talking about music and stuff. I said, for whatever it means, like, I still just really, like, enjoy listening to Gellington Jack Teagarden. Yeah. And it doesn't mean I don't like other music. It's like that music just still brings me, like, a lot of pleasure. Sure. That's the beauty of it, too, and especially recorded music. I mean, it's, it's timeless. Yeah. I mean, it is of a time, but yeah. it's timeless. It's yeah. going to be that way yeah. forever. You can always find something in that. Yeah. So, yeah, Duke Gellington. Yeah. That's amazing. 